Assalamu alaikum to all our listeners. My name is Nadim Kazmi and with me today is Sayyid Ali Imam. And we are continuing the question and answer sessions following on from our response to an extremely silent Farid Bahraini who has suddenly seemed to lose his will to respond to uh, any form of religious challenge. Although um, it has come to our attention that Farid, uh, Farid has actually um, sent out a tweet saying that if he wanted to, he could respond. Yes, Farid, you probably can respond. The whole point is that you're too much of a coward. This is exemplified by your utter silence to this uh, extensive series directed um, at your initial show. So without digressing into stating the obvious about Farid, there has been an objection raised at the time that the incident of the door occurred, that there were in fact no doors. And secondly, um, as to why uh, Sayyidah Fatima Tuzar Haslam Leha, the daughter of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his progeny, answered the door. To help answer this, I- I'll turn now to Sayyid Ali Imam. Sayyid, could you help us understand whether or not historically there is evidence of doors having existed at this time and why it was that Pak Sayyidah Salamu Leha in fact answered the door? Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, Sayyid Nazim Ghazmi, for those two questions. So let's first come to whether or not there they were doors at the time. So the first tradition is mentioned in Sunan Nasai. Um, you can see the link has been provided there for the viewers, the text. Um, if you go on sunnah.com, you can read these hadith for yourself. So the first tradition is from Aisha, who says that he opened the door slowly and he went out and he shut it slowly. See, according to this hadith, um, the Holy Prophet, may peace and blessings be upon him, had a door um, on his house which he opened and closed so really this one hadith alone just totally finishes that subject but i will give you a few more uh, the second tradition is found in sunan uh, sunan of abu daud and it's a authentic tradition um, and it's straight from aisha who said that the messenger of allah was praying while his door was bolted he was praying with his door bolted so this is another example of the house of the Holy Prophet himself having a door. Uh, and in this case, it was something that was uh, locked on this particular occasion on when he, w- uh, when he was praying. Uh, another example of another hadith, uh, this is mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari. Uh, this is this time reference to the Holy Kaaba. Salim said that the Allah's Messenger, Usama ibn Zaid, Bilal, Uthman ibn Abu Talha, entered the Kaaba and then closed its door. And when they opened the door, um, I was the first person to enter the Kaaba. Even the Kaaba itself, as we know, had doors. So this objection, it's I think we've concluded on that point in terms of whether or not there were doors. As for your second question, Sayyid, uh, this is quite an uh, interesting uh, objection which often is uh, brought up by opponents. And that is, why did Sayyidah Fatima Salaam alayhi herself answer the, answer the door? So let's have a look at uh, a report. Uh, and this is mentioned by Alama Majlisi. And he reports it, he's narrated it from a reliable chains from the book of uh, Sulaim ibn Ghais al-Halali and others from Suleiman uh, and Abbas who both said, uh, and the following text is from the book of Sulaim ibn Ghais as I mentioned, when Ali Islam saw the betrayal of the people towards him and the neglect of support to him and the assembly with Abu Bakr and the obedience to him and glorification of him, he held back his allegiance. The Umar said to Abu Bakr, what prevents you from sending us to him so that he may pay allegiance? For indeed, there's no one left who's not paid allegiance except for him and others and these four. Until Salam ibn Ghaz said, then Umar shouted till he was heard by Ali and Fatima. And peace be upon them. By Allah, you will go out, O Ali, and you will pledge allegiance to the successor of the Messenger of Allah. Otherwise, I will set your house on fire. Then Fatima said, O Umar, what is between you and us? Then he said, open the door. Otherwise, I'll burn your house. Then she said, O Umar, will you not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Will you, not, will you enter upon my house? Then he denied to go away. Umar asked for fire and then set fire on the door and then he kicked it. Then Fatima faced him and screamed, O Father, O Messenger of Allah. Then Umar raised the sword while it was in the sheath and he hit her side with hilt. 
Then she screamed, O oh, Father. Then he raised the whip and he hit her arms with it. Then she screamed, O oh, Messenger of Allah, how bad is it that Abu Bakr and Umar did after you? Until Salam said, I said to Salaman, did they enter the house of Fatima without permission? He said, yes, by Allah. And there was no veil on her. And she screamed, O oh, Father of the Messenger of Allah, O oh, Father, how bad is it that Abu Bakr and Umar did while your eyes have not vanished in your grave? She screamed with the loudest voice. See, from this narration, Sayyidah Fatima Salam alayha, was in a state of shock and she was extremely distressed. And they set fire and they attacked directly to the members of the household. And all of this essentially took place within a few minutes. It was quite spontaneous. And it's for this very reason, Salman is actually saying that there was no veil on her at the time. But what did they do? They hit Sayyidah Fatima Salam alayha. They compressed her behind the door and the wall and they made her lose her child, her unborn child, Mohsen alayhi salam. Sayyidah Fatima Salam alayha never opened the door for them. As I said before, it was a spontaneous attack. They burnt the door and they ransacked the pure house without permission. Of course, why else would Sayyidah Fatima have her face unveiled? And Sayyidah Fatima spoke to them behind the door. She tried to ward them off, as we, as we can tell from the reports. And since she was a woman, you would have thought they had some decency to leave her alone. And the fact of the matter is, we know she's Sayyidah Nasa al -Amin. She's the chief of the women of paradise. And nobody can deny her status. We know the Prophet said that she's part of him. But the Prophet said that Fatima is a part of me, and whoever angers her has angered me. And whoever has angered me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry with them. So this in itself is the biggest evidence that these people disobeyed Allah's Messenger and didn't respect his sanctities. They didn't follow his will and what was in his will to do good to his household. In fact, they turned upon the heels. The most important matter is that Sayyidah Fatima Islam Leha was the daughter of the Holy Prophet, may peace and blessings be upon him. But these people had no iota of shame in the way they behaved and conducted themselves at the Prophet's daughter's house. So Sayyid Nazim Shah, that concludes this, the, the objection about the door, whether or not there were doors at the time, and under what circumstances Sayyidah Fatima Islam allegedly answered the door. Jazakallah, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for clarifying this utterly shameful chapter in Islamic history. And thank you for clarifying the baseless criticisms and objections raised by those who support such a shameless and an absolutely deplorable incident in Islamic history. So if I can briefly encapsulate the gist of what you were trying to say is that, yes, doors existed and there's several examples in Hadith found that uh, even the Prophet's house uh, had a door, then we have the confirmation that it was in fact a fluid and uh, quite a fast moving situation. When the uh, gang of despotic terrorists uh, gathered at the door of the daughter of the Prophet's uh, uh, house causing a commotion and trying to gain entry the daughter of the prophet uh, came to the door uh, to see what was happening um, i think even if we um, by our standards in the 21st century hear a commotion at a door the first reaction for the adults in the household is to try and see what is happening and ask who it is. So if there's a commotion outside your door, you'd go up to it. You wouldn't necessarily open it, but you'd ask, who's there? Why are you here? What are you doing? And it's absolutely clear that at this point, the door was forced open and the entrance was uh, breached by a group of so-called Muslims. and further evidence that Pak Sayyidah did not actually go to open the door or answer the door uh, was the fact that um, Pak Sayyidah was not um, attired um, to answer the door. So for miscreants seeking to justify this event to raise objections that um, there were no doors, or why did the uh, lady of the house answer the door, is 
an absolute distraction. It's it's digressing from the actual incident. It's trying to lead people away from the actual uh, act, the objectionable, the deplorable, the absolutely despicable act carried out by Umar and his cohort of Muslim companions who wanted to break into the house of the uh, daughter of the Prophet. And thank you, Sayyid Ali Imam, for uh, this detailed response. It shows that these objections, like all of, all of the other objections raised so far, are absolutely baseless. And the only reason for raising such trivial and irrational objections and criticisms is simply to try and excuse and hide the actions of Sunni role models. Absolutely heartbreaking, not only to see that there was such a tragedy, but to see that people will still go to extreme lengths to try and cover up that tragedy just to save their idols' faces 1,400 years later. Hopefully, um, the steps that you began taking to learn the truth are now turning into strides and you are, inshallah, reaching closer to the destination, which is the truth, regardless of uh, which side you are approaching it from. As long as you reach the truth, that is all that matters. And inshallah, you will all reach the truth. So from myself and from everyone here at Baitul Ghadir, I bid you farewell again for this week. And f uh, just a quick reminder, if there are any queries or questions that come into your mind from this episode that you have not been able to ask, um, contact us or leave a comment in the comment section and we will try and answer these in our next show. So, inshallah, see you all next week. Allah Hafiz.